Hey guys, welcome back to Hollow Acres. I am over here by all of these daisies. We have a break in the rain today. It stormed all day yesterday, all night, and all this morning. And I'm now out here. I think it's like two o'clock or something. I'm gonna go ahead and cut all of these daisies down. I know that that sounds drastic, but I'm gonna give them enough opportunity to grow back. So because daisies are perennial, this is not going to kill them. This is a really, really hard prune, and I do this twice a year, um, right at the beginning of summer. I also do this again um, in the late fall before winter. You know, they're not looking so good. It's the end of the season anyway. Cut them all the way down. Mulch them over. I went ahead and I started, and I got a decent amount. This is only one plant, if you believe it. Uh, I decided to go ahead and get the camera out and show you what I'm doing, because it is, I think it's valuable information. Here are our beautiful daisies. We have white painted daisies and then your common standard yellow daisy. As I said, they are perennial and they grow very tall. Look at these going up, 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 up. Beautiful white daisy. Beautiful. See, but the rain, all this heavy rain really made these fall down. Way too top heavy. I should have harvested them before the rain, so this was really a, um, this was a me problem, I guess. I caused this. I caused them to uh, tip over because I didn't harvest them in time. Now this is the one plant that I cut down. Okay, it looks like actually two or three. There's a few more here. And in this last growing season over, I don't know, fall, winter, spring, these are on their third year, so they're putting off a whole lot of extra shoots and they're getting real big. So separating them off would be a really good thing to do. When choosing where I'm gonna cut these at, lopping them down at the bottom, I'm finding first, oopies, I'm gonna find first the, uh, the stems that have fallen over. I'm going for the longest ones first. I'm cutting the daisies back. Do you want to pick some daisies? That's a lot of flowers. I know. How much have you been down here? Uh, just a few minutes. That's only one plant. This was the one right here in front. I cut them because they were hanging over. When you are trying to figure out where to prune your daisies, it's a lot like any other plant that you're pruning. You look for the leaves and you find the nodes. You cut slightly above the node at a 45, 30 to 45 degree angle. So I'm finding the nodes and I'm just slicing at a 45 degree angle. That angle is going to encourage um, stem production, it's going to encourage new growth to pop out and we get bushier, more flowers. These are, these are really bunched together. I'm gonna have to separate them whether I wanted to or not. Just like, yeah. All right, this is the ending result. I'm gonna go ahead and cut some flowers for a bouquet, but I cut hard back everything else. Those at the top haven't quite bloomed yet, that one did, um, but I wanna get those in a bouquet. There's our whole pile. We're gonna pick through and get out good flowers, and the rest will we will designate a compost pile. It's definitely not as full, obviously, as it was. Look at all that there. But this is for the good of the plants. Josh went to go get some compost, and I will be top dressing all of this. And I probably will be separating off a lot of these daisies. I haven't decided yet if I'm gonna be putting them in pots um, or other beds, 
I don't really have the space to put them anywhere else right now. This is the Santa Rosa Plum uh, semi Dwarf Fruit Tree. That was a lot to get out. Um, I'm going around and I have started already topping everything off with compost. I'll show you in a minute. I came to this tree and I stopped. I want to show you what I have found. I have done just a little bit of research on it. I did some reading and I kind of got an idea of what I'm seeing and how I can fix it organically. You see that? My tree is oozing this gelatinous, clear, this is ambered color, uh, sap all over. Okay, so I did some research wondering what is this? And I have found out that this could be one of two things. Either a disease called gamosis, or we have a fruit boring insect of some kind. And I'm kind of leaning towards the insect because, I mean, it's all over the ground. And then it comes to the trunk. And then it goes up the trunk. And then it just keeps going up the trunk. <laughs> but this is the last place where I'm seeing it. There is some splitting here. But everything else looks fine. So what I am going to do is cover all of these splits. I'm going to scrape off, get off all of this sap and everything. I'm going to get all of that off. And I am going to be using this diatomaceous earth crawling insect killer. This is not food safe diatomaceous earth. This is specifically for killing insects. And it also kind of doubles as uh, helping with any diseases that are spread from said insects. Now, because I'm not 100% sure as to what this is, and I'm only just assuming because last year I did have a fruit boring insect bore into the bottom of the, uh, the base of the tree here at the soil level, but it didn't go any higher. It rained all day yesterday, but the day before I was, I come out here and I check my trees daily. This was not here. This happened since yesterday and today. So whatever it is, I caught it early and that's what's most important. So I'm just going to start by wiping. Ew. Okay, I need... This is what I'm getting out of the tree trunk. Now, I'm not trying to dig into the tree. What I'm doing is my best to get all of this out. Uh, it is like in there and under there and around there. Now what I'm doing is just slightly peeling away some parts of this bark. Um, and I'm doing that because it's, it's got to be some sort of boring something because it, it bored in there. It got in there for sure. Now you may be wondering, me digging around in here, is this going to damage it more? Uh, yes and no. So I'm not damaging it anymore, but in, you know, like any cut, it's going to look worse before it gets better. And this is what's happened. This tree has a wound. I've got to dig out all of this infection, all of this oozy, gross stuff. Peel away all the layers and get to the healthy part. That is how healing begins. Now I know that this looks bad, it is, but if I were to just have left this and not scraped it off, I missed a spot, and not scraped it off, then I could end up losing the entire tree. Yes, this is gonna shock the tree, but um, it should survive. And if I left it and did nothing, it would not. So, there are levels to progress. Here I have the diatomaceous earth. Uh, hey Jaden, could, never mind. No, it's like sprinkling very, very lightly. Yeah. Now I'm gonna take my rag and I'm gonna take my diatomaceous earth. And I am going to basically make a pile, just like this. Now 
Now you do not want to touch the diatomaceous earth directly. Uh, you don't want to breathe it in. You want gloves. So what I'm going to do is just wrap it up. Just like this. The, di the diatomaceous earth will start to come out of the bottom. See, just like that. I'm going to start down here at the base. And I'm dabbing. See? So I dab the diatomaceous earth is going to connect to all of this moisture. It's going to really grab on to it. This is going to help it to dry out. Just like, just like whenever you get cut, you have a wound. It, in order for it to heal, it needs to scab over. Is that like a good example? Yeah. It's a, hmm? So we have to dry this out. That's what we need to do. As I'm uh, doing this, it's coming my way and I'm holding my breath so that I don't breathe it in. It's uh, somewhat coming my way now. Okay, so here was my issue here. We have a lot of scarring and cuts and stuff up it. So I just went ahead and all the way up to where I didn't see any more cuts. I covered all of it in the diatomaceous earth. You see that spot down here? Nothing wrong with that spot, but everything else. I am going to be doing more research on gamosis and also uh, the different insects that attack the um, plum trees. Uh, any stone fruit, usually um, the same type of insect will attack stone fruits plums peaches anything with a big pit or pith whatever it is in the middle of the fruit i think mango too i don't actually know if that counts as a stone fruit i'll look that up too now that that's done i have pulled away all the bad stuff at the bottom i'm going to top this off with compost how's that beautiful peach tree that looks nice huh nice topped off with good compost there's our compost See if we can find a fruit. Here we go. Oh yeah. Now there is yellowing on the leaves. Um, oh, that came off easy. I did fertilize this about a week ago. I think that the compost being topped off is definitely going to help add more nutrients in here. Um, nitrogen is what it's telling me, so I should probably top it off with some 10, 10, 10. Just do some water-soluble fertilizer of the triple 10 that I have. Five gallon bucket is perfect size for the entire ring around the tree. You want to see something super satisfying? Here in front of the garden gate, I have hundreds of sunflowers sown that I just did today. A couple of other ones randomly popping up. There's some squash. I put a whole bunch of cucumbers on both sides. We're gonna have a whole lot of stuff growing up and it's going to be awesome. Since I have quite a bit of work ahead of me, I think that I would rather just be out here with some music and just doing what I'm doing. I'm gonna go ahead and end this video here. I wanna thank you so much for hanging out with me today. If you learned anything, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what it is that you learned and if it was actually helpful to you. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up. YouTube's algorithm loves those likes. It really pushes our videos out into the algorithm and puts our videos in front of other people so that they can find us and follow along with our journey and learn things too. If you haven't already, consider subscribing to Hollow Acres Homestead. Thanks for stopping by. We'll see you next time.